hey there distinction students civic education with the perfect tutor so we are now looking at governance governance in this video we'll look at the definition of governance governance in pre-colonial era or in pre-colonial zambia then we'll look at good and bad governance so let's start what is governance this is the way people are rude with or without their consent. Just the way you are rude. Whether you are consent or you are not. That is what we call governance. Now let us talk about governance in pre-colonial Zambia. This is history. So what you need to know is that governance is as old as humanity. All societies on earth have had at least one form of government or another. This means that Zambia too had some form of government in the pre-colonial era. Let us talk about this word pre-colonial era. Colonial, this is when white settlers were ruling Zambia. Now pre means before. So before colonial, before the white settlers uh, started ruling Zambia. So this is what we're talking about. We're looking at the history or something that was happening relating to government or governance before the white settlers colonized Zambia. So we had societies such as Tumbuka, Dawa, Ngoni, Bemba, Lozi, and lunda let me list them down here so that it can be easy for you to start them through we had tumbuka bemba lunda we also had ngoni we had tabwa etc etc these were called societies these were called societies the tribes now the societies were ruled by kings or queen they were ruled by a king or a queen the king or queen was at the apex or on the top of the government hierarchy this was the first person in the hierarchy of the government. If he's today, it's the president. But in those days, it was the king or the queen. So the king or the queen were assisted by the chiefs. So below the king or the queen came the chiefs. The chiefs were looking at the chiefdoms. So they were helping the kings or the queens to rule the societies. The chiefs were looking at the chiefdoms. This is the hierarchy. This is how they were communicating. Then below the chiefs came the village headman or the village headwomen. Village headmen or village headwomen. These were now looking after the villagers they were looking after the villagers assisted by the selected wise elders selected wise elders so these we are looking at the what the villagers the villagers then the lowest unity was the family headed by the father the family headed by the father so history is very important the question may come here so the king was at the apex or the queen then below him came the chiefs then below the chiefs came the village headmen or the headwomen then below the village headmen or the headmen came the wise elders Wise elders who are helping the village headmen and headwomen 
to look after the villages. Then the lowest unity was the family. They may ask you about the lowest unity. It was the family led by the father. This was a hierarchy. It was some form of governance, as we can see. The way people were ruled. I hope we are together on the hierarchy or on the history of the governance in pre-colonial Zambia. Now, let us look at good governance. Good governance. So, good governance is simply a government which is one legitimate, competent, accountable, and respects human rights and the rule of law. That's what we call good governance. Simple as that. Government which is legitimate, competent, accountable, and respects human rights and the rule of law. Then we call that as good governance. Now, what are the importances of having good governance? One, good governance enables citizens to enjoy full human rights. Enjoy full human rights. You can do whatever you want as long as you don't cross the boundaries. Good governance makes government accountable to the people because you can ask them, why did you do this? The government will be able to respond to you. Promotes transparency. In whatever the government is doing, there is transparency. No, we have bought two trucks for the country. No, we have bought this, this. We are distributing uh, the farming inputs. There is transparency in whatever the government is doing in good governance. Citizens are able to take part in decision making at all levels. At all levels, electing the president, citizens are able to take part uh, through casting a what? Effort. So, good governance is very important as explained here. Yeah. Let's look at bad governance. So these two are the opposite of each other. There we had a government which is legitimate. For this one, it's the government which is illegitimate, incompetent, unaccountable. Unaccountable. Because good governance is competent, but is incompetent. Good governance is accountable. This one is unaccountable. And the good governance respects human rights and the rule of law. Bad governance does not respect human rights and the rule of law. One type of bad governance I can talk about is dictatorship. This is not the other name for bad governance. It's just an example of bad governance, dictatorship. Hope we are together. So now, Let us look at the characteristics of good and bad governance. You know what I've done here? These two are the opposite of each other. So even as you are studying, just study the good governance. For the bad governance, it will just be opposite. Just do the opposite. So even for the characteristics, I decided to bring them together so that you learn how to make them opposite here we have characteristics of good governance here we had characteristics of bad governance so the first one citizen participation in good governance there is citizen participation in bad governance there is no citizen participation meaning here citizens can participate in decision making yet if citizens are not allowed to participate in decision making if the government wants to change the president, they will just change themselves without asking the citizens to vote. They will just do that. If they want to pass a bill, they want to amend the constitution, citizens are not asked of anything. No referendum. You have no say. But here, they will bring a referendum so that you, you say either yes or no. You participate in that. 
two, we have separation of powers. Lack of separation of powers. Here, separation of powers. This is the principle that states that the three organs of the government, which are the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, must work independently. There should be no interference. The president falls under the executive. Therefore, he has no power in the judiciary. He has no power. So, he's not supposed to control the judges. No, this is how we should pass judgment over this case. It shouldn't be like that. Then you are in good governance. But if there is lack of separation of powers, laws are being made by the president instead of the legislature. The president or cabinet ministers are taking control over the judiciary, the judicial procedures. They are controlling the judges. Now, you need to sentence this person to 25 years because of this and that. Then there is interference among the three organs of government so meaning that's bad governance respect for human rights in good governance here there is violation of human rights so for this one respect for human rights all forms of human rights are recognized protected and promoted you have the right to the right to life meaning no one can kill you all forms of human rights are protected. Here there is violation of human rights. That's why in bad governance, they can just start beating you for no proper reason. They can just sentence you, arbitrary arrests. Everything is here because there is violation of human rights. We continue with the characteristics of good and bad governance. Independence of the judiciary. The judiciary is independent. It works on its own. You know, the judiciary is very important. So when it is receiving interferences by other organs of the government or the other wings of the government, then definitely it will be affected. Here, there is no judiciary. Uh, the judiciary is not independent. Judiciary is not independent. Regular, free and fair elections. Irregular and unfair elections. Simple. Existence of political parties. You can make any political party of your choice. Restriction of political parties. You can't be allowed to form another political party. Checks and balances. Checks and balances. Checks and balances. The government comes to the public openly to explain what they did the resources of the country assuring the nation that money was used for intended purpose they tell you no we gave 1.3 million to cdf 1.2 million to uh, education these are healthy they provide checks and balances but for this one there is lack of press freedom lack of press freedom okay here why are we mentioning the press? Here, the press comes and interviews the government to provide these checks and balances. But here, the press has no freedom. So they cannot interview the government. They cannot ask things. They cannot collect information. Accountability and transparency. Accountability and transparency. No accountability and transparency. The government is answerable to the people here. The government is not answerable. You can't ask them what they did and why they did it. Otherwise, they will sentence you. Yeah. So, I have given you a homework. Look for five more characteristics of good and bad governance. Then master them. So what I want you to do is master the characteristics for good governance, then make the opposite to form the ones for bad governance. Simple as that.
it has been your perfect two times the Gilbert CJ. See you in the next video. We'll be looking at governance. Now we'll be looking at the electro system.